Hello, my name is Matthias Maklowski. I'm a scientific co-worker and researcher at the Otto von Gerich University in Magdeburg, Germany. And in this short video, I would like to try to give a brief tour and overview of our reverberation chamber lab here and try to explain all the devices and antennas and field probes and stuff that we have in here. So in the back, you can see our large mode stirrer that changes the electromagnetic boundary conditions here within this room and moves the field through space. This is what I've explained in a former video. Next question is, okay, how do we get the field in here? Of course, by using antennas and by using um, generators and power amplifiers on the outside. So the typical antennas that we use for the lower frequency range are these logarithmic periodic dipole antennas. So there's a coaxial feed here and then um, there is some, some current and voltage applied to the inner conductor of this coaxial cable. And some, something, some, some magic happens here in this balancing unit so that the positive voltage gets to this side, the negative voltage gets to this side of the antenna so that um, always one of these dipole element gets positively charged and the other one gets negatively charged and then charges will opposite each other or they will change all the time. So there's a current flowing, the current will create by the right hand rule some magnetic field that changes over time, this creates some electric field and so on and so on. So this will emit and radiate some electromagnetic waves. And because these dipole elements better work if they are matched to the wavelengths, there are long dipole elements uh, that radiate the low frequencies and the large wavelengths and then these shorter, smaller dipole elements, they radiate the high frequencies and the small wavelengths. So this antenna is quite broadband and is specified, if I check the data sheet here, from 120 megahertz to 1.6 gigahertz. And we use it for the frequencies below 1 gigahertz and above 1 gigahertz we use these horn antennas they also have a coaxial feed and then yeah, something happens in here so that this also kind of an aperture antenna uh, radiates some electromagnetic field. There will be also some, some currents flowing on these wires here on the outside and as you can see if you radiate a quite high power with this antenna these wires also get hot and somehow burned these plastic parts here um, in between. And these antennas work from 1 gigahertz up to 18 gigahertz. Okay, so these are antennas. They of course can be used as transmitting antennas. They can also be used as receiving antennas. Then you maybe also want to measure the field. For this you use field probes. So this is some isotropic field probe. It's battery powered. And the data or the field strength values that you measure are transmitted via some optical cable, via optical cables because they are non-conductive so they don't change the field. If you would connect such a field probe with a classical metallic wire coaxial cable, um, you want to measure the field at some position and at the same time you disturb the field because the cable is conducting and the boundary condition of the tangential field component along this cable would also be zero. So optical cable that does not influence the field then of course the, this unit here where the battery is inside and, and some um, unit that converts the field strength values into some optical sickness this is also conducting this, this neck here this rod is conducting and that's why these field probes are also mounted in a strange way that if they are rotated by 45 degrees in this direction and th then tilted by 37 point something degree upwards that they then measure the field in X, Y and Z direction. And yeah, why this is the case um, or how, how they are built on the inside, this can be better seen on this older field probe because here it's possible to remove the head. And then you can see that there are three dipole antennas in there um, measuring the field in X, Y and Z direction. And why it's in a strange way because th this is also, th there are also metal wires inside this part to get the um, rectified signal from here to here to this unit and there would be also battery in there and some connectors for fiber optics. And this introduces some mistake. And by having it in this strange way from the usual position rotated 45 degree and tilted upwards, 
you distribute the error introduced by this evenly onto all the three field components x, y, and z. And if you would build it like this, so this, that this would be x, y, and z, the, the, the error, the mistake in the x direction would be rather large and the mistake in the z and y direction would be rather small. And that's why to make it as isotropic as possible, these field probes are built in this way. So quite interesting. Um, then uh, what we have here in this chamber is also we have a smaller stirrer uh, which is here standing in the back. This was also some student project, some portable stirrer that could also be used in other shielding cabins like an MRI cabin. It's driven by a quite simple stepper motor and if I go down here maybe the camera captures this by some Arduino and uh, the, the, because it's it's a bit smaller, you can also rotate it with higher speeds. Then the thing that we have here is some RFID tunnel gate, which is also kind of a small reverberation chamber. Passes, packages with RFID decks would go in here. There's a shielding curtain. There would have been RFID readers in there reading the RFID text, activating them, getting data from them so that you could, if you have a package, there are, there's stuff in there everything has an RFID tag um, and we had, we had tested it here um, and it's also there was a small stirrer in there it was kind of a nested reverberation chamber or a small reverberation chamber used somewhere else okay what else do we have um, we have another <laughs> reverberation chamber here some some metalized tent some some metalized textile and some aluminum frame. So it's kind of a mobile reverberation chamber. You need about an hour with two persons or if you're quick, maybe half an hour to set it up, mount this frame and with rubber straps attach this tent. And then there's some, some outside and there's some inside door to have better shielding efficiency. And I will open it up and open the door. And then the idea is to also use this as a small, as a mobile reverberation chamber. And because we have all the an, uh, equipment, the antennas, uh, field probes, and so in here, we would also like to test this for isotropy, for field homogeneity, for the uniformity of the field, and how well it performs as a mode steroid chamber. Uh, and starting from which frequency with a very small or kind of kind of small and also portable mode stirrer in there. Okay, so I would say this is more or less it what we have here in our reverb chamber. <laughs> quite quite short tour. Maybe maybe some some because I, I usually give this tour of course with students in the room. People usually ask me what is what is this here? <laughs> what is I, let's see if the if the camera will capture this. Uh, we, we have an additional wall here inside the chamber with lots of holes in it and we use this wall to perform or to conduct measurements with coupling to cables, single wire cables, shield cables above this ground plane or uh, transmission line networks, uh, cable harnesses above this ground plane and we, wanted, we didn't want to drill holes into the real wall of our chamber so that's why we used this additional plate there where we could drill holes, attach this uh, with copper straps with low impedance and low uh, resistance and inductance and send to the chamber wall so it would act like a chamber wall still we would need, do not need to have to drill holes in, into our real chamber. Okay, this was a quick tour of our reverberation chamber here. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe I will do some other video if you have questions and write them in the comments below this video. Bye-bye.